Hey there, my name is Travis Thompson, or uh, Mr. Thompson uh, to my students, um, and um, I've come across a little thing online lately where some people are looking at a math problem that they thought was um, ambiguous, and well, it is ambiguous, I guess, and, um, and debating the different interpretations of it, and whether or not it's sort of up for, up for interpretation, and whether or not you know there's one way to answer this problem or not. Um, and um, so I thought I'd make a video about it, uh, about the different ways that it gets interpreted and possibly some thoughts I have on why one way may be um, better than others, okay? So the first thing that I want to say about this problem is that it's a poorly written problem, okay? Um, and I'll touch on this more later um, when I get into sort of why I think one interpretation of it is maybe better, but ultimately, I think everyone can agree that this is a very poorly written problem. So I'm going to go through ways that if um, I saw this problem written, I would uh, suggest that the uh, person who wrote it rewrite it. Um, and one way to rewrite this problem is like so, with a time symbol in here between the two and the parentheses. Okay, um, and then. Once we've done that, if we've got that time symbol in there, then I think things clear up a little bit And uh, because when people see this 2 next to the brackets, next to these parentheses, they want to, they really feel like those all go together. Um, so by putting that time symbol, you um, prevent people from having that inclination. Okay. Now we just go through order of operations. The way I would do this is just um, that 2 plus 2 is 4. Okay. And then we'll rewrite the rest of the problem. Now we have division and multiplication. Um, the division is on the left, so we do that first. So 8 divided by 2 is 4, and 4 times 4 is 16. Okay. Um, now there's another way to write this problem. This one is sort of an elementary way to write it. It's, it's sort of um, for you know, young people just learning these operations and stuff. When you get to more advanced um, math, you'll learn to write it in more of an algebraic way. and um, we have the 8 divided by 2, so we write that as a fraction. We don't use the division symbol. And then we also don't use the time symbol. We just put the brackets there. When it's written this way, there's no ambiguity. The 8 divided by 2 happens first, and then you, um, or sorry, the 2 plus 2 happens first, but the 8 divided by 2 happens independently of the 2 plus 2. So you end up with 4 times 4, which again is 16. Okay? Um, now, there's another way that this gets interpreted. So let's look at that. Um, some people, when they see this, like I said before, the two next to the parentheses, they see that and think, oh, that all goes together. Okay, this two goes with those parentheses. Um, and so what I've done here to represent that is I've put an extra set of parentheses um, or brackets around that whole thing. Okay, and now this is totally unambiguous. This two plus two can happen first, um, and then we can multiply by that two. Okay, so let's do that. Yep, there's that little section. Okay, so 2 plus 2 is 4, and we can put all the same brackets around again. We have that 2, okay? Now we have the 4 is just sitting in brackets, so now we do the 2 times 4, because that's in brackets, in parentheses. And 2 times 4 is, of course, 8, and 8 divided by 8 is 1, okay? Um, one of the reasons that people, um, I think, do it this way as well, one of the particular reasons that leads people to do this interpretation is because they want to do the distributive property. They want to um, distribute this 2 into the brackets, into these parentheses. So this 2 times that 2 and times that 2. Okay, So uh, 2 times 2 and 2 times 2 is 4 and then 4. So we have 8 divided by 4 plus 4. So they've taken this 2 and put it into the parentheses. Okay, So now we can do 4 plus 4, which of course is 8, and 8 divided by 8 is 1. Um, once again, all of these ways, everything I've written here is a fairly elementary way of writing um, out math, so a more algebraic, a more advanced way, is with 8 on top and the 2 times the 2 plus 2 as a denominator. And again, this also comes out to um, 1. Okay, now, those are the different ways that this gets interpreted. Those are the really, as far as I can tell, the only possible answers. Okay, so I'm going to discuss why I think one of these interpretations is better than another. And before I do that, I want to mention that, you know, and I've alluded to this, but maths or math, mathematics is a language, right? When we write something down, we're communicating something. 
I mean, obviously, you know, besides in a math class, um, usually there's a context, there's something that's going on, there's a real life situation that the math is modeling. So if somebody pointed me to this and said, hey, I need to solve this for something with my business or with some sort of thing I'm creating or something like that, I would go, uh, can you explain to me the situation here? Um, because I want to make sure I understand you correctly. If I saw this problem on a math test, you know, that maybe one of my colleagues had written, I would say, no, 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 you need to redo that as, as one of these different uh, ones because this, isn't, this is going to get misinterpreted. Whichever way you mean it, some people are going to take it the wrong way, right? If you meant it in the green way, people are going to, there's going to be some people that do it the blue way. If you meant it the blue way, there's going to be some people that do it the green way and so on and so forth. Okay, so that's, once again, that's clear. This is not a well-written problem. Um, however, I do think that we have, all, all that said, we do have conventions, um, which I think we can rely on here. And there's a few sort of um, standard rules in maths, uh, in mathematics, that we can apply, which I think lead um, to one of these interpretations rather than the other. So the conventions that we use uh, are called either, it's order of operations. So um, PEMDAS uh, in the U.S. and BODMAS in most other places, um, which of course stand for, uh, the BODMAS stands for brackets, orders, division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. PEMDAS stands for parentheses, exponents, and then all the same things, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Um, and um, oh, those came on earlier than I wanted them to. Um, I won't go into why I think... I think PEMDAS is much better only for the fact that it uses the word exponents instead of orders. I don't, I don't understand where... I, I understand... It's taken me a while, but I understand where the word orders comes from, but I think it's very confusing. Um, and I grew up in America, so I guess PEMDAS is what I was used to. Um, but teaching in Australia now, I'm very used to BODMAS as well, um, even though I wish it was BEDMAS or something like that. Because um, orders is just confusing. Uh, some people think it's of... And whatever else. Anyway, we have these conventions. Now, of course, there's a few caveats to this, a few um, provisos we need to remember, is that division and multiplication uh, don't happen in the same order every time. You'll notice that between pod, uh, BODMAS and PEMDAS, they're different, right? Um, they're in different orders. And um, the same thing is true with addition and subtraction, although they show up in the same order in these two um, abbreviations or whatever they're called. Um, so, there's a rule for those, and that is that we always do those left to right, okay? When we, when they're both sort of on an even playing field, one's not in parentheses or whatever, or brackets, we just do them from left to right, okay? So, going back to our original problem, let's just look at what we have. We have brackets or parentheses, we have division, and we have multiplication, okay? There's no reason that we shouldn't follow these conventions, okay? Um, I know you know, there's a tendency to say, oh, this is one big grouped thing. And look, I'm not saying that that's, um, you know, somehow illegal or something like that. There are no governing bodies on how to do maths. Um, and it's done differently in different places, you know, in term, particularly in terms of vocabulary, as you can hear throughout this video. I'm kind of going back and forth between American and the more British um, style. But... Um, so it's, you know, you could say, look, I'm going to, I see this as one group. Um, and so therefore I'm going to do this, you know, you want to do the distribution or you say you want to do this multiplication because it's here tucked in next to the parentheses. Um, when I think about it, I know that, you know, that the, this convention of writing things with no time symbol, it's not any different. So if I have this problem, I don't think anybody would argue that two times two is the same as 2, and then with a 2 in parentheses, right? There's no difference there. Similarly, I don't think there should be any difference in uh, what we have, sorry, speeding ahead here, um, in what we have uh, here. We have a very similar thing. I think these two um, expressions should be the same. 2 times this thing in the brackets, um, or two and then the brackets, right? You can distribute them if you want, in this case, because there's nothing else going on. Um, but there is no difference between when I add a times and when I don't have the times symbol there. It's just a different way of writing it. This is a more concise way, um, and 
you know, so that's that's an advantage. But there's no real difference in the way that the um, operations are done here. So similarly, personally, um, I don't think there should be any difference um, when it comes to this. So the lack of times here doesn't distinguish a difference in, um, you know, function or operation here. The times doesn't actually change what's happening. Um, people just see this and have a tendency to think, oh, this all goes together, okay? Which, of course, again, going back is why we just shouldn't write it this way. We shouldn't write it with a division symbol and then not a time symbol. We should do both. If we're going to do one, we need to do both. And if we're not going to use one, like here, we should use fraction lines um, as on my previous page. Um, but I don't. I think ultimately, if we had to you know, say one is better than the other. And of course, you don't have to. <laughs> this is a really silly sort of debate. You can decide whatever you want. I'm just saying my opinion that uh, there's no difference between this and this. So I don't see any difference between, you know, these things over here. And therefore, this should operate in the exact same way. Okay. Um, one other thing that I'll say about this, um, the reason why I think the, um, you know, that these two things are the same um, and that the blue writing on my previous page was, um, you know, the better way to go is because you can type this expression uh, here into any calculator. Any calculator that will allow you to type it in this way um, with brackets and with, you know, nothing between the two and the parentheses, um, it will come out as 16. You will not find a calculator that will give you an answer of 1. Um, so, you know, the, the calculators operate according to convention. Um, and really, if we're going to, you know, use conventions at all, we should use them consistently. And the, we should, I don't see any reason why it has to be ambiguous. If it's not ambiguous for the calculator, it shouldn't be ambiguous to us. Um, so that's, um, I guess, what I have to say. Uh, if you think differently, I'm more than um, willing to have a conversation about it. I was a little bit, um, you know... Uh, persistent in my um, original Facebook debate that this sparked, but um, I, I, I'm open to, to conversations about it, and I'm open to different ideas, so comment away, or, um, you know, let me know what you think. All right, catch you later.